The Up and Adam Show is sponsored by the Topflix app. Discover your next favorite movie and TV series and where to stream it. Explore trending titles, popular trailers, entertainment news, and much more, all in one free app. Download it on the App Store today for free. Thank you and enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Up and Adam Show. I'm your host, Adam Lupus. Before we get started today, I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, Mike from Hardcore Italians. Thank you so much, Mike, for the sweater. Uh, guys, if you haven't already checked out Hardcore Italians on Instagram, I'll put the link down below. And uh, for all the best Italian merchandise out there and for the best Italian content. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce my guest. Uh, you've seen him uh, growing up watching him on YTV and he now works for ET Canada. Please welcome Carlos Bustamante. How's it going, Carlos? I'm good, brother. How are you, man? I'm doing good. Thanks so much for being a part of the show today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I think this is really cool that you're doing this. How long have you been doing this show for? I've been, uh, I started back in April, uh, right when the pandemic yeah. started. And um, so actually, it's funny. So I was a barber before this. And uh, I used to love talking to people. I was cutting their hair, right? That was the main thing is talking to people, right? So um, when the pandemic happened, I, I quit barbering. I just thought it wasn't for me anymore. But I'm like, you know what? I do love talking to people still. And I, I was, I'm a very big lover of the 80s and 90s pop culture. And um, I know for me, I, I'm a very young guy. I'm 21. So it's kind of odd to see that at my age, but uh, something that I really grew up loving and stuff. So I, um, I took my passions and my interests towards a podcast, something different. And yes. I made it kind of have that Johnny Carson feel instead of just a very normal podcast, if that makes sense. I dig that. I, hey, listen, that's, I don't think that's out of the ordinary. I'm like you in that way. I, use, I love, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, retro stuff or stuff that came a bit before my time. And a lot of my friends are the same way too. And on the barber tip, I haven't seen a barber in, I guess, since March, obviously, because of COVID. Yeah. I'm going to need some of your barbering tips because I've been trying to do this on my own. And it's, I mean, it's up and down, buddy. I got to tell you, some it's days. Listen, hey, I was a barber. I can't even do my own beard. My beard's been a mess for months. <laughs> I don't trust myself doing my own beard or my own hair. Well, I mean, in your format, I imagine that you're not restricted by any time. Like you no. set, right? This is, this is what it is, right? You set the amount of time that you want your show to be or how long you want your conversation to be. Mm. So you can really do that. Like you have the opportunity just to uh, ease into a conversation, dive right into whatever you want to, if that's the way you want to go, mm -hmm. but not necessarily keep it straight to business. If you, if that's what you want to do. And that's, that's great about the freedom that you've got. Yeah. What we've got, what we're doing at ETCAN is like, we're able to do kind of a little bit of both. There's not a scenario, at least right now, where I'm going to be sitting down with someone and having um, a conversation for like an hour or an hour and a half, mm -hmm. but that's not something that is necessarily, um, it could be, but it's not something that I've experienced yet in this scenario. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the interview lengths that I do range from, you know, like half an hour to sometimes two minutes. So there's a switch that happens where, you know, sometimes you just got to get down to business or sometimes the business is just goofing for two minutes. Like who knows? You, you, you never know what you're going to get, but you know, I, I think it's cool that you're experiencing both. Cause I think both of those things are important to be able to have as you can say as skills right yeah. to be able to have conversation get to um something personal if if that is allowed if you can get there and also do the business and and truthfully it's not that those things are separated because they all kind of weave in together. Of course. You find that when you get in a conversation, right? Of course. Yeah. They kind of intertwine with each other, right? Which is important because sometimes you talk about business and then something else kind of brings, you know, a topic will kind of blossom from there, right? You know, when, you, when you're doing a performance, you have to be comfortable with not just being uncomfortable, but comfortable with the idea that you're going to be embarrassed. Like you, you're, you're striving for excellence, right? Yeah. But along the way, there's a million things that could go left, right, whatever, right? Mm. Because the car goes off the track. And um, you have to be comfortable with being embarrassed. One of the things that people hate being is feeling embarrassed. Like it's yeah. e even in those, even in like innocuous situations, like the elevator situation that we talked yeah. about earlier, it sucks. It feels bad. But if you can be, get comfortable with the fact that you're going to be embarrassed, get comfortable with being embarrassed in a safe place, in a space that's, that's not going to condemn you for being embarrassed. Yeah. 
then you'll be more comfortable just kind of, I guess, being out there and knowing that, oh, I could say something goofy here, but it's fine. Yeah. Like, like it'll be fine. Of course. Know? Yeah. That's one of the things. It's one of the big things. Of course. You know, fast forward to when Iron Man came out and I went to go interview him for Iron Man and I was kind of like, how is this going to go? I don't yeah. know how this is going to go. And, you know, press have conversation before you go in. What was your experience with this person? What was your experience with that person? Do you know that person personally? You know, how do we approach this? That sort of thing. There's a nice camaraderie there exactly. with all these different press from all over the place. And I went, his, the, where he was in his life really determined the way that he was, right? Mm -hmm. Because for Iron Man, it, I, it was one of the best interview experiences I have had up to that point. And even still, that's why I remember it. Of course. He was so lovely and so generous and answered everything and picked my brain. Why did you like the movie? Because he knew I was a nerd about it. I, I walked in and I said, I, I'm a big Iron Man fan. I read Iron Man comics since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Did we get this right? Did we get that right? And, and he kept me for a bit longer than the, than the interview just to have more conversation. And it was, you know, I don't know the man personally, so I can't say, uh, I can't say much about his state of being that day or what he was going through in life, but I can say I appreciated that at that point in time because maybe because things were going so well for him, it was one of the best interviews that I'd had. So it's interesting mm -hmm. um, when you're talking about what's memorable and what you liked uh, about interviewing people mm -hmm. um, is that, you know, with that experience with that one individual, that was like a lesson for me in being able to kind of roll with things and also to know that, just like anybody else when you're talking to someone who's who's in a movie if you know whatever is going on in the, in the day is going to affect how they are again growing up seeing on ytv right i felt like and along with many uh, of my listeners we felt like we grew up with you right and and you know the reason for that is because you made our experience very personable and very enjoyable right so was this kind of your goal when you first got into the entertainment business is to really feel personal? Like, I, I know that with ET Canada, you said there's, you know, there's some, right, you know, rules you got to follow, some questions you got to stick to the format, right? But generally mm -hmm. speaking, though, did, your, was your main goal, like, I want to connect with my audience. I want to be personable. I want to be liked, right? Is that what you wanted to do? Um, I, <laughs> when I first started, I was like, whoa, I have a job. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, someone wants to hire me. This is wild. Yeah. Um, I started off, you know, I had been a professional dancer, a competitive dancer when I was younger and started sort of being in the industry as a dancer a little bit, like not, not a, a ton of jobs, but I had a few under my belt. And um, I didn't think my trajectory was, you know, where I've kind of come to at this point. I, I didn't think anything was going to lead me to being, um, the host of a kid's TV show and, and also certainly an entertainment reporter. Although, you know, I loved both those things growing up. Those are both things that I watched on TV. Yeah. Um, I just kind of thought that, well, if I'm a performer, you know, one of the main things is you have to connect. You have to connect, you have to tell a story. So sure. that's what I'm going to do regardless of the, of the medium. And so when I started at, at YTV, there was a lot of talk about connecting and how do we connect? And what does it mean to connect? And what does it mean to connect specifically to this audience? Mm -hmm. And those initial conversations are what had carried me through the next 15, 16 years. And it was about, um, it was about being genuine. Yeah. It was about not putting on airs or pretending because, you know, you can't really do that with kids. Like you, you yeah. can tell kids one thing and mean another. Yeah. But if you're, not genuinely with them, they see it. Like if you have, if you have nieces, nephews, certainly if you have kids of your own, you see that. And yeah. so one of the big things that we talked about, um, or that was the conversation when I first started was like, however you are on the day, you bring that to the show. Obviously, like don't sit in the corner crying if, you, if, you have, if you're having that kind of day. But you, it's an elevated version of whatever the real you is going through and whatever the real you is, is being. Because if you show that you are affected by the, the world around you, if you show that you um, can be happy, sad, grumpy, all these things, mm -hmm. then the people watching you, the young people watching you know that, oh, yeah, it's okay that I feel that too. And also this person I'm watching goes through it. 
So maybe what you experience, what you, you know, you talk about you and your peers, finding that connection with me and, and Suge growing up. Yeah. Is that it wasn't just like a happy, happy, joy, joy thing all the time that we're doing and we're just here to entertain you. It was like, we're not the show. SpongeBob is the show, whatever Dragon Ball is the show, mm-hmm. but we're the thing, mm-hmm. we're, that, we're the connective tissue. That's how we act. We don't act like we're the show, we're the connective tissue. Yeah. And we entertain, but we're also there to primarily to connect. So to your point, was it my goal to, to be what I am and to do what I'm doing mm. and connect in that way? Not necessarily. Not, I didn't have like a, um, a work goal in that way. Yeah. But I certainly did always say that to myself, like if I'm going to be doing this in whatever art form I'm doing, the purpose is to connect. Like, what is it? What is the message you're trying to get across? I guess is what I'm trying to say. Mm. Like, is it that you uh, are you focused on travel? Are you focused on tech? Are you focused on beauty? What is what is the the thing about you that you want to share? Um, and again, like that's the center. Like that's your gravity. Mm-hmm. And then you around that you figure out how your how your personality fits in. Yeah. And how you how you want to present that. And there are also, there are all these other, I mean, there are all these other tips or um, sort of insider things about presentation that people talk about. And I, I'm certainly that applies, I think, when you first look at someone's grid, let's say. Yeah. How, like what draws you in, because that's it's very important. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's, uh, it, I think it's really about kind of like being your genuine self. Even with my grid, I'll be honest. With you, I I I post like I'm very genuine. Again, same with you. I post mm-hmm. whatever I want. Something that like fits my show. I've tried different styles of my artwork of stuff. I have graphic designers that I work with, um, so they all do a good job. But I I again I I like to not have any limits. I guess right. And sometimes mm-hmm. that's good. Sometimes sometimes it's bad because sometimes people will come to your page and go, oh wow, the format like it's all over the place. Or why did he post this? It's like. That's the point. The point is that it's it's a it's a show, right? It's like I'm trying to make it like something different. So, so yeah. Again, going back to what you said, I it, it's all about putting yourself in 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 um I guess like you know head first, right? Trying different things, and I guess not worrying about what people say because again, people are always gonna have this notion of I won't be on your show unless you're big. But like, you never know, right? Sometimes they may come on and they may go, wow, and that was a great experience, right? So, you know, like it's one of I guess it's one of those type of things. Yeah, I, I think with everything, like, if you're, if you have a sustained, consistent interest, mm. or can keep a consistent, uh, uh, keep a, a consistent interest mm. in something, you know, people say, it's got to be your passion. Um, I think, I think you can find success if it's, your, if it's your passion, and even if it's not your, like your ultimate passion. But if you are interested enough that you want to put in work behind it. Yeah. You're interested enough that you want to put yourself out there yeah. in order to do more of the thing you like doing, then you're on the right track. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you reach out to me. That's great because we get to have this conversation. Of course. Right. And like, I'm not necessarily concerned about a follower account. I think it's cool that you wanted to have this conversation. So mm-hmm. here we are. Right. Because exactly. also this might be a conversation that you and I had in the middle of the street. If you happen to catch me, if I was walking down whatever Queen Street or something. Yeah. Right. Like that's something that this might, might have been that. But we can't have that right now. So you're doing the, the other thing, which is just reaching out and saying, you know what? Hey, can I talk to you? Whatever. Yeah. Um, there are ways to get more followers. Uh, a lot of that for for your posting is like consistency of posting, how much you post, finding the right times of day, um, and also like interacting with other accounts that are that you that are in your wheelhouse. So you bring people back. Like those are sort of the technical things that, that you find out or you look up or whatever. Yeah. But the core of it is your is what you're actually doing. Right? And mm-hmm. so if what you're actually doing is a thing that you want to be doing, then you're probably okay. Yeah, exactly. And you just, right? And you just keep, keep on doing that thing because um, steady growth is what you want. Like e- incremental, even if it's small, maybe bigger at, at times, but steady growth is, I think, what you're looking for in something like this. Because also you want to be able to um, 
you want to be able to be at a level that's relative to what you can also do, like to your output. Of course. Yeah. Right. And your experience. Um, there are obviously times when you, if you get thrown into a bigger pool, you just got to swim and you'll get there. It's awesome. Yeah. But if, you, if you're not in there, you, you know, you keep swimming until you get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know this, I don't think I need to tell you this, but like belaboring the point about the numbers and being super, super focused on that. Um, there is value in keeping an eye on it and wanting it to grow, but you're not going to grow it if you don't, put the effort into what you're actually doing you've heard every um phrase yeah like every cliche you've heard them all until you experience them sometimes they just seem like cliches but when you experience them you're like oh i get it this is why people say that thing yeah and and the thing that i'm going to say is everybody started somewhere right exactly so everybody can relate to someone that is well hopefully everybody some people maybe they just kind of get it silver spoon whatever you're right that can be good whatever but Pretty much everybody can relate to someone being like, I want to do a thing. I'm going to try it. How do I do it? Mm -hmm. Right. I want to get to a point. And so when it comes to you, like you or anybody out there that might be listening and wants a thing, uh, professionally speaking, you got to shoot your shot. Yeah. Like you just got to shoot your shot. Who, who do I want to get as a guest today? I, I figured out a way to get to that person. Maybe I'm sending out a hundred requests today whoever, whatever, right? Yeah. If you get back one, you get back two. Wicked. That means you've got content. But yes. You just got to keep, you got to keep doing it. And there are people that, that can see what someone like you is doing, for example, with this podcast and relate to that mm -hmm. and go, okay, I'm open to, to having, you know, an hour of my time with yeah. this person and seeing what this is all about. So yeah, you just keep going. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really important. I, something I live by. Again, I appreciate you saying that, man. I really appreciate it. So, so Carlos, before we end off the show, I have one more question for you, okay? So, again, you know, you were the host of The Zone on YTV. Um, yeah. And I'm sure you watched a lot of cartoons growing up as well, right? And you yeah. followed the shows. Um, so, I'm going to give you a scenario, and I, wanna, I want you to tell me what you would do. For, for example, if you were stuck on an island um, by yourself, and you had to pick okay. one YTV cartoon character to stay with, Okay, and help escape with right to, to get off the island. Who would you pick, and why? One character to help me escape off the island. Um, I mean, whoever the avatar is at the time would probably be a good choice. So Aang would probably be a good choice because oh. as long as we have as long as we have all the elements there, we can find our way out. <laughs> that, that's pretty just, clever. I didn't think I about that. Just ride it out. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I was gonna pick SpongeBob because again, he's a sponge. And I can just flow with him, right? He would absorb some of the water, I guess. He would absorb the water? I yeah. don't know. It's kind of stupid because he wouldn't. He's really... got his boating license. He has his boating license. He hey, I wonder, uh, hey you, you would go on a boat with him? This guy, yeah. He's, he's terrible. I mean, driver. if you're stranded, if you're, you're you know, you're kind of desperate, right? I think, you're I, would just, for a I, think way I would out. just, I would just swim by myself at that point. I let Spun up drive on his own. <laughs> hey, can we, if, if we're looking for, um, can we look at secondary characters? Yes. David Hasselhoff was in the SpongeBob movie. Oh yeah, he, you remember? Do you remember? He can kind of turn into a boat, so you can. You, there you go, you're out of there. Well, one, one more thing. Sorry, speak, speaking of that, one more thing. I was watching it a couple of days ago, right? And I still have to see the new one. Actually, I didn't watch it yet. Uh, was it um, uh, Sponge Out of Water? Is that the new one? What it's called? Sponge Out of Water. Uh, is that what? The, yeah, I think so. I it's, saw it. I'm. I watched it. I watched it with the family. The kids really loved it. But yeah, yeah, right. The new one. I heard it's really good. Yeah, I didn't watch it yet, it's but fine. I was watching the original and. Uh, it, 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 looking back now, I'm like, how did this, how did they make this? Like, like for, why would they get David Hasselhoff turned into a boat? It's just the creativity. It was crazy. Eh? Like it's like, who, th who thinks of this stuff? Yeah, man. But that's the thing about like, that I think that I love yeah. about um, making stuff that's like sort of primarily for kids, but yeah. also like that adults, adults might get is that you can just do whatever. Like you can just make fun, silly, dumb, whatever it's not it's not even dumb it's just like super creative because for a young audience watching it they don't have a there's no ceiling mm -hmm. there's not a cap on like how creative you can get you can just make a thing yes yeah, wow so and so is going to turn into a helicopter or his legs are going to turn, or, or david hasselhoff's going to turn into a boat yeah that's fine does it look funny great put it in there yeah they don't know who david hasselhoff is it's just this man 
who turns it into a boat. That's very yeah. strange. It's funny. Let's go. That's fun. So, I know yeah. it's so funny, man. And so it, it, I, I, again, I still watch SpongeBob, and I always, I always will, no matter what. It's one of my favorite shows ever. Honestly, yeah, man, yeah. for sure. All right. Anyways, Carlos, uh, I want to thank you again for being on the show today. I had, I had such a great time. It was really, really fun to have you on. I was a little nervous at first, I'll be honest, but I really got comfortable with you. So thank you for making my experience enjoyable. I hope I made your experience enjoyable. And yeah, hope, to do this, hope to do this again, maybe one time uh, in the future. Yeah, cool. Yeah, dude, get, keep doing them. Keep making them. Do Thanks, the thing. Man. Thank you so All much, right. man. Guys, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, this is Adam from The Up and Adam Show, and I'll see you guys in the next one.